Welcome to Mass Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. And thanks again for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Um, let me start with uh, once again thanking Caprona Kitoni for inviting me on to uh, the uh, as a patron member at the Kenya Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm deeply grateful to him, and I'll put up a photograph of myself receiving the plaque from the president, with whom I had a good laugh. I must admit, we caught up after a long time. Um, we used to uh, both of us smoke, in point of fact. So we used to catch the old cigarette. And, at school and uh, I reminded him of that and I hope we catch up soon. It was a pleasure meeting Andrew Bonamour, uh, the CEO of Times Media Group and his team um, at the Villa Rosa Kapinski. That was on Monday night. They've of course taken a majority stake in KISS uh, in the Radio Africa group and uh, I think uh, this, these are certainly exciting times for the Radio Africa group. We had a simply outstanding meal at the Tartu restaurant of the Norfolk um, yesterday. I'd like to thank uh, uh, PK, whose real name is Pieran Chiri Priyan, and Avinash Mohan for a lovely dinner last night. Uh, they've got a new menu, um, and uh, I'll put up a photograph of the chef, Avinash Mohan, in his office at the Tartu restaurant. Um, he served a number of fantastic dishes. And one was a mushroom cup, cappuccino truffle foam a porcini dust. Uh, and uh, I'll put up an image of that. It was really tremendous. Then a red pepper passion fruit soup. Red pepper, very tangy passion fruit. Uh, reversed that tanginess. And then you, there was a little bit of melon in there as well to clean it all up. It was really absolutely super. As a starter, I had the salted snapper with ginger, chili, and green mango. Beetle leaves, and that beetle leaf uh, taste was quite, uh, quite a coup de grace, I must say, and lime. And uh, I'll put up a couple of other things tomorrow, but I must say we all enjoyed ourselves thoroughly. Um, of course, uh, the Norfolk uh, is, a, is a city hotel, one of the, I think, if not the first one. Um, there is a Mount Kenya Safari Club, about which I've written before, and just to take a little quote um, from the piece I wrote, I think in 2011, we're not going as far as that, only two days journey in the ox cart to a bit of El Dorado my father had been fortunate enough to buy in the bar of the Norfolk Hotel from a man wearing an old Etonian tie, so says Elsworth Huxley's The Flame Trees of Fika which is a beautiful and lyrical book. And on that note, I'll put up a photograph I found on the uh, Fairmont Mount Kenya timeline. Another gorgeous day at Mount Kenya. Have a look at this photograph. Yesterday, it was a holiday, and uh, we went with the family for some Eid celebrations, and I took this photograph of Hannah on the swing, and then I noticed as she was swinging round and round, she was getting less and less comfortable. And having badgered me to get on that swing, she didn't really want to see it again. Political reflections. This is from tweets Z A K E. This is what Gaza looked like at some point today, and it's a pretty frightful photograph and a frightful situation. Doctor Basal Abu Ward tweeted: "This, this cemetery bombed in Beit Hanun in Gaza again, um, and really, it's dreadful. It's just a prison." Uh, I, um, M. K. Badra Kumar, who's an Indian diplomat writer, whom I quite like following, says, Wherever Americans go in the Muslim world to establish their hegemony, jihadis follow. The point is, the demons that the US led NATO let loose in Libya to destroy the Gaddafi regime are coming for the Americans now. It's quintessentially a replay of Afghanistan and Iraq. The Independent is saying Israel goes rogue. America's inability to use its leverage over Netanyahu signals a worrying new chapter in Middle East history, which I think is a valid point. And then this sentence from another Independent, an article in the Independent, we'll have to go to Rich Wrap-Ups to read the rest of it, says we shoot them like sheep. 
but next day double the number returned. Currency markets euro one thirty four zero eight, um, but this is the uh, this is the lowest for the euro since November twenty first last year. Dollar index eighty one point two one, beginning to punch through resistance here. Japanese yen one o two ten, Swiss franc point nine o six nine, pound one sixty nine forty eight. Um, struggling to get back above 170. The Aussie below 94.9383. Indian rupee 60.185. South Korean won is firmer 10.2251. Rial 2.2302. Egyptian pound where it's been um, for a very long time 7.15. South African rand looks marginally softer 10.6062. I'll put up a three-month chart of the dollar index and as you can see the dollar is beginning to make a move and we've got to be wary now um, the Bloomberg's dollar spot index gained the most in six weeks yesterday rising above its 200 day moving average that's an important chart signal as well euro dollar 134.08 um, we're down at November lows and uh, it certainly looks as if we're going to face a stronger dollar in the next few sessions Twitter said sales more than doubled to $312.2 million, exceeding the $282.8 million analyst estimates had compiled. Uh, so that's interesting. Monthly active users reached $271 million at the end of June, 24% higher than last year, still marginally lower than the 25% year-on-year growth in the previous period. Uh, ran the share price up 30% after the announcement. Coming to the commodity markets, gold back below 1300 at 1299.25. And if the dollar really gets going, this is going down and down. Crude oil 101.10 and sidelined. I think it's a, it'll be a good buy below 100. So let's just see how this pans out. But certainly, in my view, crude oil is the best proxy for geopolitical risk. And currently, I don't think it's reflecting the reality. Um, this picture, Pictures Earth, tweeted, beautiful Dubai, and indeed it was a great photograph as well. Obama bids to forge African ties as China becomes first choice. This is Bloomberg. When Uganda sought bids last month for an $8 billion contract to expand the East African nation's rail network, it only invited Chinese companies to apply. That condition agreed to by the Ugandan and Chinese governments illustrates the hurdles President Obama must overcome as the US tries to challenge China's status as Africa's number one investor and trading partner. China's trade with the continent exceeded $200 billion last year, more than double that of the US, which it overtook five years ago. Obama will step up his efforts to forge closer ties with Africa when he hosts more than 40 of the continent's leaders <coughs> at a summit in Washington next week. The World Bank projects African growth of 4.7% this year. US is looking beyond securing deals and access to a consumer market of a billion people to promoting democratic principles and countering Islamist-inspired security threats from Nigeria to Kenya. China has got a massive head start, Daniel Silkin, director of Cape Town-based Political Futures Consultancy, said in a July 23rd phone interview, from both a diplomatic and economic point of view, China has made all the running over the last few years, so, that, so there is quite a catch-up for the US. China has held five conferences with ministers and leaders across Africa since 2000. Uh, expectations that Nigeria um, has the potential to be one of the world's top 20 economies by 2030. This is McKinsey. We build airplanes, the Chinese do road construction, said Todd Moss, a former State Department official. It's not like we're regularly going head to head. Soaring uh, production of shale gas has reduced its US's reliance on African crude. That's a fair point. Uh, but all that crude will be upstream to Asia. And, you know, the, the raison d'etre of, uh, of US hegemony is that they're going to control uh, the sea lanes and. Uh, remain a gatekeeper. The imperative for the US is to protect its strategic oil interests in Africa is diminishing extremely rapidly if it's not already vanished. The US is viewing Africa through a security lens more than ever before. Um, 
And I see China and the U.S. in an increasingly adversarial position, frankly, um, uh, in Africa. And uh, I had an exchange with a friend of mine called Hoya Wolf, at Hoya Wolf on Twitter. And he, he, we were back and forth. And he said, conflict between U.S. and China would not be decided in the Straits of Taiwan, but from the Straits of Malacca to the Bab el Mandeb, which are the key choke points in the world's geography. Um, and uh, he spoke of the Achilles heel of China and uh, Asian countries being this need for energy, which I agree with. And I said, you know, distant blockade, blockade operations and a decisive naval advantage keeps the U.S. ahead of the curve, in my view. Uh, then he came back into the shades of last century. The more things change, the more they remain the same and only names of different stakes just as high. Energy security and resource access remains the Achilles heel for rising Asian powers, um, saying this will drive great power competition. I said the pivot is based upon a strategic calculus as it affects U.S. competitors. Um, despite uh, rhetoric, that means China and its influence. And I was saying that the main theme that ran through the pivot document after reading it, I realized the pivot to Asia has to encompass the Indian Ocean. Um, then Hoya Wolf tells me that overwatching it all from Djibouti is the U.S. No superpower would cede ability to control such important sea lanes. And that's the point. Um, talking about how Asian powers are positioning to secure upstream energy resources in East Africa. Um, and I, was, I started the entire discussion by quoting Kaplan, who said, In a global world, East Africa is not only a nodal point, for, Indi for the Indian Ocean, but the western flank of the Pacific is the, what he responded um, to that comment by Kaplan saying that it's a global, a nodal point for the Indian Ocean. He's saying not only the Indian Ocean, but also the Pacific. Obama urges African nations not to make economic excuses. At some point, we have to stop looking somewhere else for solutions, and you have to stop looking for solutions internally, he told an enthusiastic audience. And as powerful as history is, and you need to know that history, at some point you have to look to the future and say, OK, we didn't get a good deal then, but let's make sure that we're not making excuses going forward. This is ahead of uh, this week's U.S.-Africa Leader Summit, next week's U.S.-Africa Leader Summit in Washington. Um, and probably in response and rejection of comments made last month by the Equatorial Guinea President Teodoro Obiang. Um, Obama also said there was not a single country in Africa that could not be doing better with the resources it had. The Mozambique government and Renama apparently have reached a deal to end violent clashes. Uh, talks have led to total agreement on ending the violence and the two sides are now discussing implementation. Um, the accord is due to be signed tomorrow, so it's obviously probably been signed. On that note, I'll put up that photograph I like of Maputo that I took when I was visiting earlier this year. African and African-related issues, excluding South Africa and the Maghreb region, have already raised 9.35 billion US dollars as of July 25th, according to IFR data that compares with 8.28 billion in 2013. In June, July alone, seven issuers with sub-Saharan African interests have issued bonds raising $3 billion. Um, Barty Airtel missed quarterly profit estimates on Africa woes, apparently. Um, a, a, an analyst uh, in Mumbai says that India business is firing on all guns, but if they keep underperforming in Africa, that hurts business. Uh, Subaram was expecting earnings before interest taxes, depreciation and amortization in Africa to be about $302 million, while Bharti Airtel managed $283 million. Ebola continues to spread. I'll put up an image I found on the FT. The South African all share is either at an all-time high or just below it, but it's up 12.941% this year. Dollar versus rent, a uh, little bit firmer, 10.60.69. And the rand actually strengthened 1.1% since the end of June, and that's the best performance among 16 major currencies tracked by Bloomberg. I'll put up a photograph of the Joburg sunset that I took when I was visiting not too long ago. Um, uh, and it was around that time that I said, that, in my opinion, the rand appeared to have snapped a more than 12-month downtrend 
and that it is a constructive forward indicator. And I was largely taking a more constructive view of uh, South Africa than many, for example, of the ratings agencies. The Egyptian pound unchanged at 7.15, the Egyptian stock market at more than 60-month highs, up 28.796% uh, this year. Nigerian all share eased 0.6% yesterday. It remains up 2.313% in 2014. Two dead after female suicide bomber targeted Nigeria petrol station. So we've had two uh, female suicide bombers in the city of Kano, Nigeria, in the space of 24 hours. Ghana Stock Exchange uh, up 0.55%. It's up 7.505% uh, this year. But bear in mind, the SEDI has now slumped 38% in the world's worst performance on global currencies tracked by Bloomberg. Um, and I said, said, talked about this some time ago, and I said, look at Ghana, where the president claims he's looking for a homegrown solution to a situation of his making, and frankly, there isn't one. I'll put up a link uh, for a Twitter tweet he put out, where he said, together we can achieve more. And then I learned Kenya, Ghana has ended uh, its ban on dollar imports and is looking to do a bond issue next month. The Portuguese newspaper Negocios has reported that the government of Angola may subscribe to a capital increase at Banco Espirito Santo's Angola unit, which would be very helpful for that. I wrote the following, Your Dream is Determined by the Will to Try. On Saturday, I might speak host to Joshua Oyara, the CEO of Kenya Commercial Bank. I thank Bob Collimore, whose collabo with KCB Tanvir Shara Smart targets 1 million SME accounts within a year, and Farad Thakra, and in fact everyone in the audience for making this session trend on social media throughout the weekend. Joshua was a tour de force and plain evangelical in his conviction that this was that once-in-a-lifetime moment and for all of us Africans, Joshua told us to distinguish the signal from the noise, that the only thing that stands between you and your dream is the will to try and the determination to see it through, and that if you have passion and determination, you don't need an alarm clock to wake you up. We need to outcompete ourselves, he said, and asked who is David Radisha competing with but himself. Kenya Commercial Bank will be reporting first half earnings on Thursday, but we learnt that Joshua expects mortgage rates to trend to as low as 10% this year. As I previously stated, 10% is a magic tipping point the world over, and I expect 10% mortgage rates to prove the catalyst for the next leg higher in a decade-long property market rally which has seen prices rise more than 3.26 times over that 10-year period. We also learn that KCB aims to float a corporate bond by 2015. The CEO's vision is to make KCB a top tier, top 10 bank by 2019 from a ranking of 41 in Africa today. Joshua also told us that even in a period of turbulence in South Sudan, we've been able to set up new branches in Juba. More than anything, I believe Joshua will have enthused his customers with his energy and focus. Allow me to return to Joshua's 10% mortgage rate prediction because I think this will be a tipping point and will prove a catalyst for another run higher the Nairobi Securities Exchange. By the way, the exchange launched its IPO last week and plans to offer 66 million new shares at 9 shillings 50 cents a share and list a total of 194 million at the bourse. The stock exchange will be valued at $21 million. It will become the second publicly traded market on continent after South Africa's Johannesburg started trading shares in June 2006. These shares are a buy. I believe the Eurobond was a watershed moment marking a coming of age of our capital markets and that $21 million for the exchanges lock, stock and barrel looks a bargain basement price. Returning to the stock market which has been circumspect of late, you can say that again, and treading water I expect that period of circumspection to end soon and the market to start gliding higher. In particular, expect strong buy-side demand for good dividend-paying equities in a lower-rate environment, take Safaricom, with a dividend of $0.47 cents a share is worth 3.85% of yield. 3.85% is worth more when the comparison is worth versus 10% 
than when it's the comparison is versus 15%. Interestingly, this year, international buy-side demand has underpinned the big cap counters at the exchange as it did in 2012 and 2013. This buy-side demand is secular in my view, my view long-lasting. It's only getting going now and will continue to be a rising tide and exhibited its muscularity in the recent Eurobond oversubscription. Small cap stocks have also seriously outperformed this year. Consider Samir, Unger, even Everready. The segment which has seriously underperformed is what I would characterize as value stocks. Look at Mumia Sugar which now has a market cap of $40.217 million. Uchumi has a market cap of $34.126 million. Both Mumias and Uchumi need to urgently address what have become egregious valuations. The lack of urgency around addressing this issue is mind-boggling. Capitalism is at heart Darwinian. Winners get win, losers lose and get culled. Finally, allow me to commend Caprona Gitoni and his turnaround team at the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, who relaunched the KNCCI on Friday at the KICC with the President in attendance. The CS Amina Mohammed spoke of the KNCCI as being at the forefront of our economic diplomacy. And at that point, I'll say full marks to Kit. Kenya will borrow 60 billion shillings from the African Development Bank to help more than double electricity connections to 70% of the population in five years. Equity Bank reported first half profit after tax accelerated 21.451%. Um, profit before tax up 21.095%. Uh, loans and advances to customers at 186.51 billion versus 150.477 billion last time, last year. Um, and uh, Dr. Mungi said to Reuters, when you look at the loan book, it's very exciting. They have operations in Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, South Sudan, said its assets grew to 302.92 billion shillings from 261.58 billion. Said all the firm's subsidiaries have broken even and together contributed 15% pre-tax profit. Solid momentum propelling these results. Kenya shilling at 87.80. Nairobi all share fell 0.67% uh, last time out. It's up 10.0622%. But as I said, that period of circumspection, I think, is coming to an end. NSC20 is down 1.2789% this year. Interesting uh, highlights by Moses Kemimbaro from the Communications Authority of Kenya Q3 quarterly sector statistics report. Kenya now has 31.8 million mobile subscribers. Uh, mobile penetration is at an all-time high of 78.2%. Um, uh, Safaricom remains, of course, uh, the biggest uh, um, uh, operator. Mobile money subscriptions in Kenya now stand at 26.2 million subscribers, 103,660 mobile money agents. Um, SMS traffic declined marginally, probably due to WhatsApp. Internet subscriptions, 13.3 million subscribers um, now. Um, uh, number of internet users increased to 21.6 million. Internet penetration now at 53.3 percent. You know, in these bits of data, you see Kenya is far ahead of any other African country. Frankly, uh, McKinsey called it the IGDP component of the economy, and actually had Senegal ahead of us, and I was quite surprised at that. But essentially, this is the new economy, and it continues to gain traction. Um, and I think it's a big piece of Kenya's um, uh, exuberance and resilience as well. Once again, thank you for stopping.